join me. Come over to the dark side of photosynthesis. Buried within the thylakoid memory, millions of photosynthetic units carry out the first stage of photosynthesis by converting light energy to chemical energy. This first stage, known as the light reaction, releases oxygen into the atmosphere and produces NADPH2 and ATP molecules for the second stage, known as the dark reaction. The dark reaction takes place in the stroma and produces the final products of photosynthesis, glucose, cellulose, protein, and starch. It's called the dark reaction because none of the energy required for any of its individual reactions comes from the direct absorption of photons. Instead, its requirements are met by energy-rich products of the reaction. Since the light reaction requires light, and since the dark reaction depends directly on the light reaction for its energy needs, both processes can only occur during daylight hours. Beginning in the 1940s, American biochemist Melvin Calvin spent more than 20 years tracing the path of carbon in photosynthesis. He discovered that the dark reaction is actually a whole series of reactions responsible for fixing carbon from carbon dioxide into organic molecules. This series of reactions eventually became known as the Calvin cycle. Calvin experimented with chlorella, a single-cell green algae, because he could control its rate of photosynthesis in the laboratory. His experiments involved feeding the algae carbon dioxide containing radioactive carbon-14, then exposing the algae to light. To his amazement, he discovered radioactive carbon in the three-carbon compound phosphoglyceric acid or PGA, after only five seconds of illumination. Let's step through the individual reactions of the Calvin cycle, starting with one molecule of the five carbon compound, ribulose phosphate, or RUP, which is present throughout the stroma. RUP encounters an energetic molecule of ATP, fresh from the light reaction. In reaction one, the ATP donates its third phosphate group to the RUP. The ATP minus one phosphate group becomes the slightly less energetic ADP, which then leaves the scene, returning to the light reaction for more energy. RUP has gained a second phosphate group and is now ribulose diphosphate, or RUDP. The di in the diphosphate means two, two phosphate groups. Carbon dioxide, which has diffused into the plant, now enters the Calvin cycle. In reaction two, one molecule of carbon dioxide combines with the RUDP, forming an unstable six carbon compound. In reaction three, this unstable compound quickly cleaves into two molecules of phosphoglyceric acid, PGA, each with three carbon atoms. In reaction four, ATP molecules once again enter the cycle. Each molecule gives up its third phosphate group to a molecule of PGA. And each molecule of PGA, having gained the phosphate, becomes the compound DPGA, or diphosphoglyceric acid. In reaction 5, NADPH2, the other ingredient provided by the light reaction enters the scene. NADPH2 
injects each molecule of DPGA with energy. Both DPGA molecules lose one phosphate group to become new three carbon compounds called phosphoglyceraldehyde, or PGAL for short. Only one main stumbling block prevents the two PGAL molecules from combining to form glucose. If we use the analogy of a key in a lock, the two PGALs represent two keys. One of them must be changed. And this is exactly what happens. With the assistance of enzymes, one of the PGAL molecules transforms into an unstable molecule called DHAP. Now the key fits the lock. The unstable DHAP quickly combines with the other PGAL molecule to form fructose diphosphate. A few more enzymes. The loss of one phosphate group. And glucose phosphate is produced. Glucose phosphate can be dephosphorylated, that is, made to give up its remaining phosphate group to become, finally, glucose, the simplest sugar. If glucose is not immediately required in the plant, glucose phosphate is instead synthesized into starch for long-term energy storage. Let's briefly go back to the Calvin cycle. Reaction 5 produced molecules of PGAL. Surprisingly, only a few PGAL molecules go on to form glucose or starch. More than 80% are used to produce new ribulose phosphate, which finally closes an imaginary loop and completes the Calvin cycle. By looking at the Calvin cycle in an expanded diagrammatic form, its cyclic nature becomes more evident. ATP donates a phosphate group, converting ribulose phosphate to ribulose diphosphate. The addition of carbon dioxide forms an unstable intermediate compound, which quickly splits into two molecules of phosphoglyceric acid. Then, more ATP reacts with the two PGA molecules, giving them each an additional phosphate group and producing diphosphoglyceric acid. NADPH2 molecules from the light reaction infuse new energy and transform both DPGA molecules to phosphoglyceraldehyde. One of the two PGAL molecules is converted by enzymes to DHAP. It then combines with the remaining PGAL to form glucose phosphate. Finally, simple glucose is produced, and the unused PGAL molecules are reformed into RUP, bringing us back where we began. Yeah.